rivals for decades. These two have competed in video games, television shows, comics, and most importantly, sales numbers. But when it comes to an actual face-off in the ring, which one reigns supreme? Mario, the most famous video game character of all time. And Sonic, the hedgehog created to kill Nintendo. It should be noted that, seeing as this is a fan-made death battle, we'll be following the typical death battle format and rules. Here they are, pause if this is your first time reading them. It should go without saying, but both franchises will be spoiled in their entirety. Movies, games, comics, oh my. Most notably, we're applying all official material except the stuff that's specified to be an alternate character or contradicts the video games. So basically, no Archie Sonic or Paper Mario. And both characters will be examined at their full potential, but only they have influence over this fight. The final verdict will be our answer for who would win more times than not. Hey, see that up there in the corner? Those are extra notes for people who are really into this matchup or these characters. Whenever one pops up or switches out, feel free to pause and read it for more information about whatever was just said. Again, stressing, this is in no way officially sponsored or recognized by anybody, definitely not the official show. It's exclusively a love letter to a great series and a fun project for us. We'll probably never do anything like this again, so just enjoy the ride. I'm Little Zebot. And I'm Obi-Wan Cannoli. No, you're not. And today we're going to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a fan-made non-profit death battle. Italy to Brooklyn to the farthest reaches of the galaxy, Mario was known as one of the mightiest heroes to ever live. Born as one of the legendary star children, he was always destined for greatness. Well, maybe he was, but his storkshire wasn't. The baby deliverer dropped Mario and his twin brother Luigi three separate times and delivered him to the wrong house. Come on, this job can't be that hard, right? After being raised in Italy, he attended Brooklyn's Plumbers Academy and founded his own shop in the city alongside Luigi. But one day, while fixing a blocked drain, they were sucked into the mystical warp pipe that led into the Mushroom Kingdom. Once there, they defeated the previously undefeatable Bowser Koopa, and the rest is history. Mario and Luigi would spend the rest of their lives defending the Mushroom Universe from the grip of the sometimes chill, sometimes terrifying Bowser. Mario himself is almost always the one to deal with Bowser in the end, in no small part thanks to his status as a star child and all the magical powers that come with it. He's got hops, backflips, long jumps, and can even jump off walls or spin through the air. With the ground pound, he butt slammed into his enemies so fast he catches fire. Mario can jump high enough to reach the clouds, and he's a quick study, able to become a black belt after a single day of training in Plum Fu. Yes, it's Kung Fu, for plumbers. He stores everything he could ever want in deep pockets and bombless gloves, doesn't age, heals while swimming, and turns toilet brushes into zippers. No, I'm not kidding about that one. With Firebrand, Mario can create and manipulate fire, and with a Fire Flower, this power expands even further. His typical arsenal is enormous. Spin drills, water backpacks, the Golden Ultra Hammer, and the Master Mushroom Sword, which can extend and slice through almost anything and wearing the AOK -OK where it protects him from most status effects. But let's be real, everyone knows this guy for basically inventing the idea of video game power-ups. He's got tons and tons of them, all into the craziness he's already got. He uses these to fly, turn invisible, heal himself, become animals, grow giant, freeze people in ice, turn into statues for more defense, and go invincible for a short while. With the rock mushroom, he transforms into an unstoppable wrecking ball. With the hammer suit, he throws endless hammers that smash the mightiest of foes. And with the gold flower and bubble flower, he transforms his enemies into gold coins and bubbles, respectively. Unless they're strong, like Koopalings. While he can only use one at a time, and each is removed by only a single enemy touch, this practically endless well of power-ups ensures he is never lacking for options. Not that he needs them, he's fast enough to dodge lasers, strong enough to twirl dinosaur through space, and tough enough to take a blast from Kamek that sent him flying into another star system. Mario has bested many foes, Lucian, who threatened the planet, Smithy, who destroyed Star Road, and the Draconic Lord of Lightning. And even if a fight doesn't go his way, he can reverse time to the beginning of the battle with the one use earlier Titan's metal. That water backpack alone is like his weakest weapon, and it's strong enough to, underwater, clean the teeth of a giant eel with bacteria that polluted 200 million gallons of water so bad that touching it literally hurts. Wow, this is a really weird world. And Mario is weird, you're powerful enough to match. He's breathed hard enough to destroy a castle, survived being turned into stone, and flapped his arms hard enough to fly. Plus, he gets a super form when he absorbs a Starman. While it only has one canonical appearance, in the TV shows and manga, Mario makes regular use of this form, showcasing new powers like flight and creating energy barriers, as well as strength that can annihilate ropes that restrain his base form. Oh, so that's where all those new ground sprites came from. Though this form does have a time limit. 
if even that's not enough, he's got one invincibility leap, which gives him a killer tail attack and complete, well, invincibility. It's got an arbitrary time limit and can't stand lava, but does it matter when you can hurt people just by touching them? Even without any of this, he's still astonishingly powerful. He's Bowser's superior, no questions asked, having beaten him many times, even while sleepwalking. The same Bowser who survived a dip in a black hole. Heck, he's way stronger than Gino, who can straight up shoot stars, and he keeps up with Yoshi, who ran a race against another Yoshi that rammed into the moon in one second. When Bowser absorbed the magic of the Wonder Flower, he claimed he was powerful enough to rule the entire universe. And yet Mario, along with many of his friends, managed to defeat him. Such breaking does not always mean something, but in the English translation of the Super Mario RPG remake, the secret boss Kulex claimed a similar level of power. And again, working alongside a large group of allies, Mario was able to best the Dark Warrior. Well, of course he did. Mario was not just an ordinary plumber. He's the guy who gets hit by the unstoppable and jumps right back to stop it. When demons and turtles think they're invincible, he shatters that dream with a wahoo to the face. It's not about being strong, but being a hero, staying up when everyone else is lying down. He'll always come back, right for round two, and he doesn't know when to quit. Unless that happens. Er, yeah, right. Mario may be one of the most ridiculously impressive folks on Nintendo, but he's been defeated his fair share of times, and he does have a pretty severe weakness. He just can't take the heat. Quite literally, without his magic cap that protects him from atmospheric heat, he can even die from harsh sunlight. Yes, sunlight. Luckily, that hat is pretty special. He's used it to fight in the middle of a hollow sun or just grabbed another one in his hands. Holy crap, that's his weakness? This plumber can do anything. So it seems. When he discovered the Fountain of Youth, which was a waterfall flowing into a baby pool, he was able to create a spiral of plumbing so intricate, it turned the Fountain of Youth into a Fountain of Age by reversing the flow of the waterfall, forcing it to defy the laws of physics, and flow upstream from a pool which it still somehow filled. What the crap? Mario has done the impossible more times than any of us can count. Whether it's a baby saying job or fighting a panda eating dragon, nothing has ever been too much for him to handle. With this plumber bringing them into the future, Nintendo was clearly in safe hands. The year is 1987 and the world of video games has changed. Nintendo has revolutionized the industry, with their Nintendo Entertainment System carrying them into a bright future, a future the fledgling company Sega wanted to take part in. To ensure a piece of the pie, they created the Console Wars, a series of advertising campaigns against Nintendo, and racing them to the front was their icon. The creature made to kill Nintendo, Sonic the Hedgehog. But in his own universe, how did Sonic come to be? Was he a normal hedgehog mutated by a scientist experiment? Was he a member of a royal family who was forced into hiding with his brother and sister as a baby? Or was he a fictional character who came to life after a test pilot's accident? Well, actually, he's an alternate universe version of King Arthur. Wait, really? After the villainous Dr. Robotnik began capturing small animals to power his machines in order to destroy the green world and make his own machine-based one. Which, on this planet of talking animals, is akin to cooking babies to run a theme park. Sonic the Hedgehog stepped up to save the day. Many, many, many times. And true to his name, he's fast enough to do it before the Doctor even notices that he's there. He may be super strong and durable, but speed is basically Sonic's thing. He's dodged lasers, outpaced rainbows, kept up with a power grid, and outraced Metal Sonic, a robot who flies between planets in seconds. To capitalize on such speed, he has a variety of special moves and attacks, such as the Spin Dash and Homing Attack. He's also monstrously skilled in martial arts, even outmatching the robot Emerald, who has enough combat knowledge to crash supercomputers. He can use wind shears as projectiles to vibrate his molecules to heal his wounds or tear through things, power an entire windmill farm with a single jump, do a side loop to kill stuff and summon greens, 
and his run can amp the latent energy in the air to burn through steel. Only if he lets it, though. Sonic is able to perform all this through chaos energy, a force of binding energy across the universe that he's able to tap into. As such, physics is spared from the otherwise devastating energy of his speed and strength. He boosts his power through chaos energy focused emeralds. Just one already amps you up, but Sonic's collected all seven dozens of times, often before even starting a battle. With them, he can teleport and even stop time for a bit. But he doesn't need the chaos emeralds to pull off astounding accomplishments. Yep, all he needs is a good pair of shoes. Like the custom shoes, which can boost his speed, make force fields, and slow down time. And being in response to Nintendo, of course he's got power-ups that let him control the elements, turn invincible, and transform enemies into rings. The immunity idol protects him from status effects, his hammer, um, smashes stuff, and with hyper go on energy, the absolute stupidest name for an alien magic system, he can shapeshift into a bunch of things like a laser cutter that slices and dices. And befitting of King Arthur, he also holds Excalibur, a sentient sword that, in Sonic's own words, can cut through anything. And don't forget the greatest weapon of all, a gun. Uh, no, really, it's a regular pistol, not joking. Sonic is impressive. He's defeated Infinite, who could create suns, Master Core Ibis, who formed a black hole that covered a country, and even Emerald's ultimate form in less than 30 seconds. He survived attacks from a being who could wipe out all life in the galaxy, and even entered a black hole that was threatening to consume existence. But none of that comes close to his speed, like we said, main thing. Like one time when Eggman slowed down time until Sonic's speed was normal so he could finally take a win. This was so slow, even characters who blocked attacks as fast as lightning were basically frozen in time for hours. Or when he escaped cyberspace with speed alone. Or when he and another hero were trapped in a universe where nothing existed, and through the power of super speed and super friendship, overpowered the entire dimension and broke out into normal space. Because... Sonic. That kind of speed and power makes him pretty cocky, though. He's held back for the sake of fun a lot, which means that he's been surprised and defeated by guys who really shouldn't have been able to handle him. Something he's had to face many times. Sonic isn't just a freedom fighter, he's an adventurer. He wants that ride, that thrill, the life of knowing that he is the very best he can be. But while he might have been created for soulless corporate reasons, thanks to his friends and adventures, he's ascended far beyond that. Yeah, despite being a modern icon to the 90s, this little hog's grown a whole lot. Choosing to rely on others, becoming friends with once fierce rivals, even comforting those who have seen their own death. To Sonic, being strong is not about being more powerful than everyone else, but being able to reassure someone that everything will be okay, just by being there. That's a lot of hype to live up to, but he can handle it. His chaos energy protects him from extra magical abilities, from mind control to time manipulation, and even changing the laws of physics. And when the Paradox Prism broke, shattering all reality like a mirror and remaking everything into one of five alternative timelines, Sonic was completely unaffected. Holy cannoli! And he's not even in super mode yet! With the power of all seven emeralds, Sonic achieves the golden glowing form known as Super Sonic. What a surprise. Super Sonic's insane! He can fly, throw energy attacks, heal others, shoot Kamehamehas, and he even gets a big buff in all of his everything. Even ignoring circumstances where he, say, escaped the holds of gods who consume time, he's still fast enough to chase Gemroll from Earth into a space nebula in only a few seconds. That would require speeds of over 3 billion times the speed of light. And he just keeps getting stronger. No, really, base for modern Sonics to feed guys that he used to need Super Sonic for. No problem. Just imagine how strong Super Sonic is now. Draw enough to fight the ancient techno deity known as the End, which was explicitly stated to be more powerful than any foe Sonic had previously faced. This would include beings like the universe merging Egg Wizard, the multiverse consuming Solaris, and the timeline resetting Time Eater. Fight is a strong word. Supersonic killed the end with a single punch. Supersonic does, however, have a time limit directly corresponding to the amount of rings he holds. In Sonic Frontiers, it lasts about 16 and a half minutes. But should the worst happen, he can always enter a different super form, including the one unlocked after the Chaos Emeralds have their potential unbound. Hypersonic. Wow, Supersonic, Hypersonic. Brilliant as always, Sega. Yeah, release the Dreamcast the day you announced it. Can't go wrong there. Hypersonic is much like Super, but faster, stronger, and invincible, with a similar consumption rate. But even without a Super form, there's nobody on or above this planet that can stand up to the blue blur. Even against a robot who can see the future and found no possibility of Sonic winning, he still prevailed. He's the ultimate modern day knight, the guy who you call when you scrape your knee and when you need a god of death punch in the face, all in the blink of an eye, as long as there's no water to drown in. Hey, how come he can breathe in space but not underwater? No one knows, but while the battle for peace lives on, when the fate of the world is in his hands, you can always count on Sonic to rise above the rest and protect what matters most. And that's why Sega's still making consoles. Wow.
I was expecting more of you. You're unskilled, untrained, and unworthy. You forgot one. Unstoppable. Alright, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate. I mean, we've run the data. It should we try to be original in this? Part? It's time for a fan made non profit death battle! <laughs> <laughs> Look, bud, I'm gonna use this area as a training spot. Whoa. I don't know who you are, but could you maybe get out of here? Okie dokie. Hmm. Maybe I can use that guy as a training partner. Do a surprise attack and see how he takes it. He recovered pretty quickly, and it looks like he wants to fight. This'll be interesting. Fight! around. Now it's time to get serious. from the past. Also, what? Yeah, this was a difficult fight to analyze. You realize the comments are going to be filled with nothing but hate, right? Jeez, I hope this video never gets popular. Ugh. Mario was definitely a powerful adversary, and he wasn't going down without a serious fight. In fact, there were a lot of factors that complicated this matchup. All right, let's take this piece by piece. Experience, skill, arsenal, ability, speed, weaknesses, and overall power. There are definitely things to account for outside of this, but this should give us a general overview at least. Starting with experience, it's actually a fairly clear-cut advantage for Mario. While Sonic has certainly had some wacky adventures and been forced into wild situations, 
Such occurrences are daily for our favorite plumber. He's fought a far larger variety of foes under many restrictions that Sonic is rarely placed under, and sees a far more unique approach to his adventures in almost every regard. Not to mention, he's over a hundred years older than the Blue Blur. He's had like 200 careers and can even fight while sleeping. Yeah, Sonic wasn't matching that. But the same cannot be said for skill. Keep in mind, experience can be overcome with enough creativity and fighting ability, and Sonic has frequently displayed both, even against beings as old as the universe itself. Mario's fought some martial artists, sure, but even just fist-fighting Ultimate Emerald put Sonic way up the ladder. Ultimate Emerald not only had the full martial arts of the rest of the Sonic cast, but his own combat data, which was enough to crash even Eggman's technology. Even AI capable of seeing the future cannot reliably predict Sonic's actions. There's nothing Mario's seen that even comes close to that. Okay, sure, but Mario pulls head again in terms of Arsenal. Sonic definitely isn't bad, he's got a lot more here than most of us would think, but it's hard to compete with bottomless barrels of power-ups and hammers. The category is closer than that, though. Both can resist a lot of the other's arsenal through the AOK wear an immunity idol. Even the Gold Flower wouldn't work on the Freedom Fighter, as it fails on creatures weaker than him, and he's resisted far greater effects. Excalibur was more capable than the Master Mushroom Sword, Mario had no method of resisting Sonic's time manipulation, and Sonic had the perfect means to counter the invincibility leap through his fire or vibrations. But with a list that long, Mario will be pulling new tricks out of his gloves long after Sonic ran dry. He takes the edge, albeit with a fight. A fight that's a lot less even when it comes to abilities and powers. Beyond Firebrand, which Sonic matched in many ways, Mario didn't really have much. While Sonic could always, say, teleport behind him, block his attacks with shields, or stop dying. And it's not really fair to compare Super Mario and Super Sonic. Even if you give Super Mario everything he's got from all his variations, there's nothing that implies the boost in power he gets is within light years of Sonic's. It should be noted that Mario Kun's gig abilities, like walking through comic panels, are exactly that, gags. The manga itself is very clear that they cannot change his story. Even then, Sonic has had similar experiences with his own comics. And even if Sonic was ever under any real pressure, he could always just hop into another dimension and wait until he was ready to strike back. Mario didn't have any way to stop that. Sonic had plenty of tools to accomplish such a thing, or could do so through speed alone. Speaking of, speed. While both had light speed reaction feats, such feats were a rarity for Mario and extremely common for Sonic. Maybe Mario could compare to that Yoshi that broke above light speed, but just Eggman's time slow alone puts base Sonic at over 300 times the speed of light, to say nothing of the potential for infinite speeds with him breaking out of dimensions and all that. To be clear, we can't give Mario's spaceflight from Mario Galaxy any creds. Not only is the cosmological structure of the Mario universe way different and this from galaxies mean it's wholly separate things from how we use it, but all those were guided paths through portals or star launches. And even if we did, none of it matches up to Super Sonic's flight anyways. Sonic takes a clear advantage in speed. As for weaknesses, yeah, Sonic's cocky attitude means he loses a few times in the hundreds of possibilities this fight runs through, but he's not dumb and usually knows when to take things seriously. Mario didn't really have any way of forcing Sonic underwater, while Sonic could easily windstorm up enough to get rid of that hat, or just take the fight into outer space, which Mario can't breathe in without a Luma or Cappy. Reducing us to our last category, power. Both had crazy levels of power. Both are way above characters who can make stars, both can survive black holes, and both could fight folks that destroy all of time. Sure, Sonic's fought a ton of universe-breaking guys, but so is Mario, right? Eh, uh, maybe. Most of Mario's feats in this regard are questionable for a variety of reasons. Bowser brags all the time, and even Kulex's statement is nowhere to be found in the original Japanese text, regardless of the version. Also, if Mario can survive an overwhelmed universe-destroying attacks, why did all the Lumas in creation have to sacrifice themselves at the end of Super Mario Galaxy against an attack that was well, destroying the universe. And we can hardly scale Rosalina's rebirth magic to Mario's survivability, or else every single butterfly and blade of grass would also be universe level. But even if we did accept this as Mario's potential, it wouldn't be enough. Yeah, even in fighting guys like Wonder Bowser and Cool X, Mario had plenty of help from a bunch of guys just as overpowered as he is. But Sonic's fought folks with similar power levels with way less help, or none at all. As for that universe-destroying black hole, Sonic's literally jumped inside his own black hole that would have destroyed the universe. Maybe more. And he was fine. And Sonic's feats didn't stop there. Merging two universes together is far more potent than simply destroying them, and Solaris was threatening all time and dimensions across multiple universe-spanning timelines. Sure, Super Sonic had help in besting both of these threats, but not when he one-hit killed the end, who was even stronger. And Super Sonic wasn't even his strongest 
form, there's really nothing Mario has that approaches this level of power. So there we go. Mario has some edges, but just doesn't stack up against someone so much faster and stronger, especially if they're a better fighter with less weaknesses. And you know those other factors this narrow grid style doesn't talk about? Sonic has pretty much all of those too. Like, Sonic being way faster means Mario's power-ups do zilch. He'd get tapped on the shoulder before he could even throw one attack. I think it's important to specify that this is an intentionally narrow way of viewing the characters. Mario and Sonic have accomplished great deeds and grown in their own ways since becoming heroes, and that doesn't correlate to power. They're canonically friends. This isn't a measure of who is the better character, or who has the superior video games, of course not. It's a celebration of who they are by putting together a unique puzzle that just so happens to end in brutal murder. Yeah, if you don't believe that, check out literally anything else we've ever done. These guys are way more important than their power levels. But looking at those power levels gives us a chance to have fun with them in a different way. And there's nothing wrong with that. Mario put up the best fight he could with everything he had, but ultimately, in this one regard, and pretty much only in this one regard, his blue rival overwhelmed him. But you can't just say that! Poor Mario. Sonic just hedgehogged this victory. The winner is Sonic the Hedgehog. Hey, thank you so much for watching. This video took a lot of work to put together. I'd like to give special thanks to Dane for the absurd amount of editing and fantastic original score, Funky GPU for the pixel art logos and emblems and the analysis machine, Crusper for the absolutely killer animation, Bobby Terramina for voicing our Sonic, Obi-Wan Cannoli who was sadly unable to make it to the final recording, and of course, Death Battle themselves. All research analysis and script writing was done by me, so don't blame these other guys for that. I did my best, I put out what I think is true, but I'm just one guy who doesn't do this for a living. It's possible that, in a couple of weeks, Death Battle releases Bowser vs. Eggman and puts Mario at infinite multiversal, undoing everything I said. But I wouldn't really mind that. The real purpose of this video is to be a celebration. Of Mario and Sonic, of course, but mostly of Death Battle themselves, which has been a huge inspiration to so many creators and rose from the ashes to continue to do so. If this video got a little bit of that across, or was just fun at any point, then I think I accomplished my goal. This is the one and only time we're doing this kind of thing, but as teased, a commentary and behind the scenes podcast episode is coming soon, with information right in the description. Again, Again, thank you so much for watching. Go watch Death Battle, go watch Fan Battle, The Raptor, Your Only Mate, just everyone in this community, they deserve your support. Well, as Qui-Gon Jinn once said when he was always right before he was wrong about a lot of things and then died, there's always a bigger fish. <laughs>